Lenovo's Legion 5 and Asus's Tough A15 are both great mid-range gaming laptops this year, but which should you get? I think the answer is going to surprise you. The build quality of both laptops is quite good. They've both got metal lids and plastic interiors, which feel nice. There's only minor flex to the keyboards and the lid, nothing to complain about for mid-range gaming laptops. The Tough A15 is a little smaller in both width and depth, and the Tough is thinner too. It's hard to fairly compare because Lenovo only lists the thinnest point at the front. And although the thinnest point of the Tough is a little thicker, side by side, the back of the Legion is thicker than the Tough. Not only was the Legion 5 bigger, but I found it noticeably heavier too. The Legion is also available with an even larger 300 watt power brick in some regions too, which would increase its total weight further. On the left, the Legion just has two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C ports. The Tough also has has two USB 3.2 Type-C ports here, but they're slower Gen 1. The Tough otherwise also has its power input, Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI 2.0b output, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, and 3.5mm audio combo jack right down the front. They've both got a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port on the right. And that's all the Tough has on this side. The Legion has its 3.5mm audio combo jack on this side, as well as a switch to physically disconnect the camera to ensure privacy, a feature that the Tough does not have. The Tough doesn't have any ports on the back, while the Legion has its gigabit ethernet port, a third USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, HDMI 2.1, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, and its power input. Personally, I prefer the port layout on the Legion because it keeps those larger and bulky cables like the power and ethernet running out the back and out of the way. The ports on the Legion are also just objectively better too. The Tough has two USB Type-A ports, while the Legion has three. The Tough also has two USB Type-C ports, while the Legion has three, and not only that, but the Legions are faster USB 3.2 Gen 2, while the Tough uses slower Gen 1. Not only that, but the Tough does not have Type-C charging, while the Type-C port on the back of the Legion can be used to charge the laptop with up to 130 watts. Only one of the Type-C ports on the Tough can be used to connect an external screen with DisplayPort, while all three of the Type-C ports on the Legion support that. The Legion also has HDMI 2.1, so you can connect a 4K 120Hz 8-bit screen with G-Sync. The Tough, on the other hand, maxes out at 4K 60Hz 8-bit with G-Sync, due to it being 2.0B. I preferred the keyboard on the Legion. It's probably personal preference, but the keys just felt clickier and nicer to press to me. The Legion also has larger arrow keys that are easier to press, while the Tough has clear WASD keys, making it more obvious that it's a gaming laptop. The lid of the Tough also just makes it look a bit more like a gaming laptop, while the Legion looks a bit cleaner. Both keyboards have one zone of RGB backlighting, and although the key brightness was a little higher with the Tough, the Tough's lighting looked a bit more patchier compared to the consistently lit Legion keys. The touchpads on both were good. I preferred the clickier feel with the Legion more, but the Tufts was about a centimeter wider and still worked well. The Legion's power button was more useful, as it lights up to show you the current performance mode in use. The Legion screen also goes the full 180 degrees back for sharing, while the Tough tops out at around 130 degrees. Both laptops have speakers underneath towards the front on the left and right sides. The Legion speakers sound clearer, but also more tinny. The Tough has more bass, and overall just sounds better to me. The latency mon results weren't particularly impressive from either of these laptops. The Asus Tough A15 comes with a 720p camera, and this is how it looks and sounds. The Legion 5 on the other hand has a higher quality 1080p camera, but it is also available with a 720p option, so expect a bit worse with that one. Both of my laptops have the same key specs with AMD's Ryzen 7 6800H 8-core CPU and Nvidia RTX 3060 graphics. Both laptops have their batteries towards the front, cooler at the back with two fans, two memory slots, two M dot two slots for storage, and a removable Wi-Fi card. It's just hiding underneath the SSD in the Tough. 
Wi-Fi performance wasn't that amazing from either laptop, but the Legion 5 had a slight lead over the Tough A15 in my testing. You could of course upgrade the Wi-Fi card to something better for like $20 lower. Although both of my laptops came with 512 gig SSDs, the one in my Legion 5 supports faster PCIe Gen 4, so it has much faster read and write speeds. This might vary by region though, and as both laptops have the 6800H CPU, you can use faster PCIe Gen 4 drives in either laptop. It's worth noting that the Tough A15 I bought only came with one 16 gig stick of DDR5 memory, while the Legion 5 had two 8 gig sticks. This might give the Legion a benefit in some tests, but from my own testing, one stick of DDR5 is still similar to dual channel. Both laptops have control panel software that lets you set different performance modes. The A15 gives us some control over the fans with the option to set the fans to full speed, while the Legion 5 does not have any fan control out of the box. You need third party software for that. As for thermals, generally the tough A15 was running warmer. The A15's idle temps were like 15 degrees Celsius warmer, though I don't personally think this matters at all. When under a combined CPU and GPU stress test to represent a worst case full load scenario, the A15 CPU was reaching thermal throttling at 95 degrees Celsius. Although the Legion CPU wasn't thermal throttling, the GPU was thermal throttling in its highest performance mode, though the A15's GPU GPU was thermal throttling in performance and turbo modes too. The highest manual mode with the fans maxed out was needed to avoid it. Both the CPU and GPU were clocking higher with the A15, which may excuse the higher CPU temperatures on the TOF. The A15 was able to run all 8 CPU cores at 4GHz in manual mode, while the Legion 5 maxed out below 3.7GHz in the exact same workload. This explains why the TOF A15 was generally running warmer, especially on the CPU. The Legion's CPU was power limited to a little over 30 watts, while the A15 could surpass 45 watts. More power means more performance, but at the expense of more heat. The Legion was able to reach higher GPU power limits, though as we saw, the TUF was still clocking a little higher on the GPU. It was a small difference in any case, and could come down to silicon lottery, or perhaps the faster and louder fans in the TUF allow the GPU to boost higher. The Legion's keyboard area was cooler to the touch with both laptops laptops just sitting there idling. The tough was also a bit warmer on the keyboard when under heavy load, but this was mostly in the middle section. The WASD area was fine. Let's have a listen to the fan noise. The Legion was quieter in most cases, especially when running under full load with a combined CPU and GPU stress test. But don't forget, the TUF does give us some fan control to make changes. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark, and at 1080p, the Legion 5 was just 1 FPS ahead, which honestly is a small difference and within the margin of error range. It's definitely not going to be a change that you're actually going to notice when playing in any case. Stepping up to the higher 1440p resolution, and now the tough A15 was a little ahead. But again, it's a 1 FPS difference, so no major change either way. I doubt you'd be able to tell which laptop you're playing on in a blind test with performance so close. Cyberpunk 2077 was about 1 FPS ahead on the Legion 5 at 1080p. However, the Legion had a 13% higher 1% low, so less dips in performance. It's possible that this is a result of the tough A15 only having one stick of memory, but from my own testing so far, Far, this doesn't really seem to matter as much with DDR5 as it did with older DDR4. The 1% low gap closes in a bit at the higher 1440p resolution, though the A15 was still a little behind. But the difference in average FPS is even closer together now. The tough A15 was also a little behind in 1% lows in control at 1080p, though its average frame rates were slightly ahead of the Legion. The 1% low difference again gets smaller at the higher 1440p resolution, and again 
again, the tough was about 1 FPS or so ahead of the Legion, so really not much of a difference at all. Here are the 3D Mark results for those that find them useful. Outside of gaming, raw CPU performance was also quite close. Both laptops were basically scoring the same in single core performance in Cinebunch, and the Legion was only a couple of hundred points ahead of the tough in multi-core score. We're talking about a 1.4% increase there. So again, like the games, only a minor difference that you're not going to notice in practice. That said, things change when we unplug the charger and run the same test on battery power. The single core scores are still fairly close together, however the Legion's multi-core performance suffers much more, dropping back over 5,000 points. This results in the tough performing much better in multi-core performance when you're unplugged from the charger. Not only does the tough perform better when running on battery, it's also able to last longer when running on battery too. The tough's battery is 12.5% larger than the Legion's, but it's able to last 21% longer in the YouTube video playback test with both screens at 200 nits. The Legion was lasting a bit longer when running an actual game though. The Legion was also ahead when it came to content creation workloads, despite both laptops having the same CPU and GPU. Again, some of this may be a result of the two sticks of memory, but the Legion does also have a higher minimum GPU power limit. And as we saw in Cinebench earlier, it has a slight edge in CPU performance too. Blender was an exception. In this entirely GPU-only workload, the Tough had a small lead. Although both laptops have a 15.6 inch screen, they're both available with 1080p or 1440p options. Unfortunately, I've got a 1080p Tough and a 1440p Legion, so not directly comparable, but I'll still share my screen results. The 1440p panel in the Legion gets brighter at full brightness, but at 90% brightness or below, the Tough was brighter with a more consistent brightness curve. Color gamut was much better with the Legion. The 1080p 144Hz panel in my Tough just doesn't seem that great. The screen response time was way better with the 1440p panel in the Legion 2. Again, this isn't a fair comparison because the 1440p A15 screen is probably better than the 1080p version, but it's clear that the 1080p panel in the Tough isn't great. The 1080p panel in last year's Legion was better than the newer Tough. So based on this, I'd hope the 2022 Legion 5's 1080p screen isn't as bad as the Tough. The total system latency shows how long it takes between a mouse click and when a gunshot fire appears on the screen in CSGO, and the faster screen in the Legion would be the biggest reason that it was faster than the Tough. Although both laptops have a mock switch, only the Legion takes things to the next level with advanced Optimus, meaning you don't have to reboot to swap between Optimus on or off. The Tough would need a manual reboot to change. The Legion also has G-Sync, at least with my 1440p panel. I believe the 1080p 165Hz Legion 5 screen also offers G-Sync, but the 144Hz and 60Hz options do not, and I don't think any of the tough screens offer G-Sync, though both laptops can do FreeSync with the integrated Radeon graphics as long as Optimus is on. The Legion gives us much more customization options through the BIOS. The tough on the other hand only offers extremely basic options. Alright, so what about the price difference? This is difficult to fairly compare because both laptops often go on sale, so refer to those links below the video for current prices and current deals. And speaking of deals, if either of these laptops do have a good sale, I'll be sure to add them to my new website gaminglaptop.deals. So make sure you check out that website to save money on your next gaming laptop. At the time of recording, the ASUS TUF A15 with lower tier RTX 3050 Ti graphics is on sale for 700 US dollars at Best Buy. Lenovo's Legion 5 with the same RTX 3050 Ti graphics starts at $1,100, but that's with the 6-core 6600H instead of the 6800H. The 6800H version is an extra $70. The 3060 version of the Legion 5 that I've tested in this video is $1,450 right now on Lenovo's website, which really isn't great as I've seen the 5 Pro with 3070 Ti on sale for around that in the past. Still though, this is cheaper compared to buying the same laptop from other sites like Newegg, which have it for $100 more. The Tough is also available at Newegg with the same 6800H CPU and 3060 GPU for $100 to $200 less than the Legion. Alright, so generally speaking, the ASUS Tough A15 seems to be cheaper compared to Lenovo's Legion 5 wherever I look. So then, the question becomes, is it worth paying more money to get the Legion 5? Honestly, probably not. In more cases than not, the Tough A15 was the better laptop. So the fact that you can get it for less money is 
just icing on the cake. Things like performance in games were basically tired, and CPU performance in Cinebench was very close too. The Tough does perform better when running on battery power though, and the Tough also lasts longer when running off of the battery, at least when not gaming. The Legion did seem to have an edge in content creation tasks though. Granted, as mentioned, that could be due to the memory difference. The Tough did run hotter, but this isn't something I'd personally be worried about. The trade-off is of course that it's able to reach higher clock speeds. Though, as we saw in the game tests, that doesn't really seem to translate to extra performance. Although the insides of the Tough are hotter, the laptop isn't hot to the touch, but the fans can get louder, which is something you'd be more likely to notice. The Tough is a little smaller and more portable, as it's a fair bit lighter too and its speakers sound better as well. The Legion does have some nice extras though, including more and better ports, and in my opinion, the better keyboard and touchpad. Build quality was pretty evenly matched, maybe a slight edge to the Legion. All things considered though, unless you really need the extra or faster ports of the Legion, or if you're lazy and you want advanced Optimus so you don't have to reboot to turn Optimus on or off, then you really can just save the money and get the cheaper tough A15 in most cases. Maybe not with the lower quality 1080p 144Hz screen that mine has though, as that was notably a step down compared to what my Legion had. I never thought I'd be recommending a tough over a Legion, but here we are. The A15 has definitely grown up since it first launched in 2020. If you need more information on either of these two laptops, then check out the full review videos over here next, as I go into more depth in those. Both of these laptops are also available with Intel 12th gen CPUs, it's not just AMD only. So find out which CPU you should get in your next laptop over here next, before wasting your hard-earned money.